Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Our lovely neighbors to the north, of course, are Canadians. And uh, I'm in Michigan, so a lot of our border actually abuts Canada. Go to Detroit, look across the river, there's Canada. So the Canadian legal system is very much like ours in a lot of ways. Uh, they dress differently in court than we do here, as far as the lawyers and the uh, judges go. But beyond that, a lot of their legal system is similar to ours. And several people sent me this story out of Canada, and this is pretty cool. Uh, changes to Family Law Act will make it easier for separating couples with respect to their pets. Their pets. So one of the oddities of the law, uh, if you said, Steve, name 10 things that you found unusual about the law that you really think are strange in this day and age. And one of them is that pets are considered property. Property. So if you own a piece of property or a thing, I'm talking about an object, Right? You own this thing right here. This is a thing, okay? If you were to go to court and be involved in a custody battle and, a, and an ugly divorce and you're fighting over everything and it comes down to who gets this cup, okay? Cups from Finland, okay? Who gets this cup? Well, we ain't going to cut it in half. Um, one of us is going to get it. The other one will be unhappy because we both want that cup. <laughs> so what happens? Well, the court looks at it and goes, well, gee, it's just a thing. Uh, and let's assume nobody has any spe you know, special attachment to it more than the others. So in other words, it wasn't given to me by my dying grandfather on his deathbed who said, Steve, take this and never let it out of your sight. No, 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 no. Uh, we were at a garage sale picking up stuff we liked. Don't even know which one of us picked it up. But we bought it. Turns out it's our favorite cup. <laughs> the judge has still got to look at it and go, okay, one of you gets it. Who gets it? Uh, do we do we joint custody? You each get it for six months? No, more likely than not just to end it, the judge is going to go, okay, what's it worth? What's it worth? And go, okay, one of you gets the cup, the other one gets the cash value. It's a thing. It's an object. It's, a pro it, it, it's just property, okay, physical property, movable property. So the question is, what happens to pets? And this is the thing that's always bothered me, is that the courts have often looked at pets as property. So if you, if you, if you get a dog... No one likes to talk about this, but you buy them. You actually go to either a breeder or a pet store, heaven forbid, or someplace else, and you, and you buy a dog. Or you can go to the pound and adopt a dog, but that's going to cost you some money. But my point simply is that somewhere along the line, you can probably, if push came to shove, put a price tag on what your dog cost you. And, and I've mentioned Milo and Wolfie in the credits of every video I do. It says, remember Milo and Wolfie. Two Shetland sheepdogs that I had for 14, 15 years. And they both passed away a couple years ago, 2015 for Milo, 2017 for Wolfie. And I know exactly what we paid for them. But when we got them, we did not think of it that way. Like, it's, oh, this is a, this is a, you know, this is a 500 R dog. This is a six. No. You, you pay the money because that's just how it is. But you don't think of them as property like that. So when couples divorce, obviously, they often fight about the house, a lot of their stuff. They fight about the kids. And sometimes they fight about the pets. And so now the changes to this law will allow the courts to get more involved with this. And the courts no longer have to view the pets as simply property, i.e. like the thing I was talking about earlier. Okay? Proposed amendments to the Family Law Act will clarify the law around pets, property, and pensions to better meet the modern day needs of separating couples. Going through a separation or divorce can be an incredibly difficult experience, says the Attorney General. To help make life easier for couples going through a separation, we're introducing amendments to the Family Law Act that better reflect the priorities and values of people today, including making sure the important role pets play in families is considered in the separation process. If passed, the amendments will provide more guidance for parties and judges when determining how to address ownership and possession of pets. Because keep in mind, that if it's a thing, it's owned. Who owns this thing? Well, the couple was married. They bought the dog. So they own the dog. But it's not the same as like saying you own your children or you own your car. Those kinds of things. Yeah, you own your car. We, we understand that. But your children? Well, that's not quite something that you own. But then who gets possession? So, you know, for instance, let's suppose that the couple gets divorced. One of them gets the dog. But the other one comes over to visit the kids, for instance, and the dog comes out, and it's still their dog, right? Even though it's in the possession of the other spouse. 
So the act will require consideration of factors such as the person's ability and willingness to care for the animal and the relationship a child has with it, as well as if there's a risk of family violence or threats of cruelty to an animal and more. So let's suppose that the couple's getting divorced, okay, and they've got a couple little kids. And the father goes, well, I'm going to go move into an apartment in the city. And the mother says, well, I'm going to go live on a farm out in the country. And it uh, turns out there's all kinds of acres the dogs to run around on. Oh, by the way, the kids are coming with me and uh, primary custody and the father will have visitation. Well, it might, it might make more sense for the dogs to go out and live in the country where they can run around outside as opposed to be walked several times a day from a high-rise apartment in a city where they won't see grass for days on end. Okay, I'm mean, just saying these are the kinds of things a court could take into account. Court could also take into account, you know, like what happens if one kid goes here and one kid goes here, one kid goes there. So these amendments reflect how pets are valued as unique family members by society rather than as inanimate property like furniture or this cup, says an animal law specialist at Schroff and Associates. Having relevant factors to consider for these difficult decisions will bring more clarity and is a welcome change. And so in case you're curious about this, I do not have a copy of the proposed law in front of me because I always feel like wait till it gets carved into stone before we start talking about it. But quite often they'll say in the, the consideration of this matter, courts are to consider the following factors and they'll lay out all the factors. I've actually seen a quote unquote simple set of factors as 35 factors long with respect to who got custody of a child in another state. It was not Michigan. I believe it was 35 or 37 factors. And so if you took the bar in that state, they might ask you, list the factors, <laughs> all 37 of them. But those are the kinds of things you look at. So, so as we look at the two people before us and they cannot agree on who gets the dog or the cat or the iguana or whatever it is that you have that's, that's a pet, as you're, as you're fighting over that, the judge is now going to be able to say, okay, let's look at the following factors. Which one of you can provide a better home? Which one can, can, can take better care of it? There are some animals that don't like to be alone. And I've, I've known people, you know, who've had a dog and they live by themselves. And when they were gone, the dog was alone for hours and hours and hours and hours at a time. Some dogs are okay, some dogs are not. Cats obviously couldn't care less. <laughs> Get out of the house. <laughs> Another amendment will make it easier to equitably divide property by preventing the use of the outdated principle of the presumption of advancement to decide how property is divided under the act. Historically, that principle applied only to property transferred from husband to wife, not a wife to her husband, or between same-sex spouses or unmarried spouses. And by the way, for those of you who think I may have been crass about that last joke about the cat, I should also let you know that in my entire life, I've basically had three animals in my life that were there for long periods of time. Milo and Wolfie as an adult. And when I was a child, we had a cat named Tommy. Tommy. <laughs> Not named after the rock opera, but I suspect because he was a cat. And somebody said, hey, Tomcat. That, that, that's funny. Um, and 16 years later, the joke's not as funny. But got Tommy when I was five years old. And he made it to 16. So uh, I also understand cats. So I've, I've, I've been in a house with cats for a long period of my life, as well as dogs. Times have changed, so it's important that our legislation does as well. During a separation, outdated presumptions aren't helpful in solving today's challenges and only serve to remind us of the inequities deeply rooted in society, says the Parliamentary Secretary for Gender Equity, talking about that previous presumption of advancement. Removing it reaffirms that we're taking action to build a better, more inclusive province for everyone. Changes to the Act also include updates to sections that govern the division of pensions to align with the current practice of pension plan administrators based on recommendations from a BC Law Institute report. The BCLI, that's them, is pleased to see the introduction of legislation implementing the Expert Project Committee's recommendations to improve pension division, and these changes are based on feedback from Phase 1 of the Multi-Year Review of the Family Law Act to address changes in society as well as developments in case law. The review is taking place in three phases to allow the province, indigenous peoples, legal stakeholders, and people throughout British Columbia to continue working together to modernize the act and ensure it remains reflective of today's family dynamics. And so the main thing I found interesting here was simply the notion about pets 
no longer being treated purely as property and so considered by the courts, then actually looking out for, uh, in essence, the best interest of the pet, okay? And so that is a fascinating thing. I've actually known attorneys who said that their hobby uh, or what they were really doing uh, with more and more of the time was pet law. Now, I say hobby because there are some places where pet law actually makes no sense. Like, what is pet law? The law that, that they follow? No, no, no. It's the law that affects how pets are treated differently than property. But the thing is that many states don't do that. They don't recognize that at all. And so the sad part is, and I'm, I'm going to give an example here and understand that I'm simply making up an example here, okay? But let's suppose that you brought your dog to a groomer, okay? Let's say you brought your dog to a professional groomer to be groomed, and they call you back a little while later, and it's like the dreaded phone call from your dealership, except this is your someone who's got your dog. And they go, there's been a horrible accident, and your, and your dog is dead. Your dog is dead. Sorry. And you go to investigate and, and just plug in any horrific facts you want. I'm not even going to do that because it hurts me to think about this. But plug in the most horrific facts you can think about. It is 100% their fault. It's 100% their negligence. Somebody there did something on purpose. Somebody who hates animals was working there. Okay? So you go into a lawyer's office, and it depends what state you're in, and you go, I brought my dog to the groomer. They call me half an hour later. My dog is dead. What do we do now? And to many people, if you said put that on a spectrum, of how harmful that would be to you, how much pain you would feel. Most people would go, oh, the needle would be just jammed up against the far side. I mean, that's, that's about as bad as it can get. Now, you say, but obviously, uh, if, if one of your relatives died in a similar situation, you took them to the doctor for a checkup and they called you, oh, your family member died, that'd probably be a little further over here, right? So there's, there is going to be some little distinction here, right, on some level. Some states are going to go, well, what, what's it cost to replace the dog? You paid, you paid $1,000 for that dog? Here's a check for $1,000. Go and get another one. And, and anybody who's owned, excuse me, anybody who's had a dog, cat, or equivalent in their life would go, that is not an appropriate compensation. That is not enough. The question then is, is there any way to get more? And so keep in mind that in the law, we often talk about compensation. And you can get compensated for different elements of damages. So your actual damages, what you are out of pocket, might be the price tag of the dog. Is there more? There very well could be. But it would be more in terms of things like mental anguish, pain and suffering and stuff on your part for what you went through when you found out what they did. Were their actions outrageous? Were they reckless? Were they wanton? You know, those kinds of things. And if they were, you might be able to get that. But there are some states that are notoriously conservative. And, and, and by that, I mean uh, stingy with those kinds of things in a courtroom. And they might say, well, gee, you can't put a price tag on being sad. You can't put a price tag on your anguish. You can't put a price tag on, on, on how you feel. Uh, there's $1,000. Go buy another dog. And that's not the case. So as many of you know, I've avoided saying the word widget during this video. <laughs> this is a widget, okay? The other word we often talk about that people like is the word fungible. Fungible. So if there was, say, a $100 bill behind me and I owed you $100, and you said, Steve, you owe me 100 bucks, I can walk up to you and hand you five $20 bills or I can hand you a $100 bill. You can't say, Steve, this isn't the same $100 bill you gave me that I gave you. This, this is a different bill. $100 bill is a $100 bill in this setting, okay? So if you come by and you buy a widget from me and uh, you come back later and I want another widget, I give you another widget. The widgets are widgets. That's what, the, that's what the term was used for in that sense. So animals are not fungible. They are not fungible. And so just to use my example again, Milo and Wolfie. Milo and Wolfie are both Shetland sheepdogs. Shetland sheepdogs. Milo is the uh, blue merle who's got the more splotchy look to him. He's got some gray, he's got some black. And Wolfie was the one who was a bi-black, meaning that he was generally two colors. 
black and white. And the dogs tend to have the big white collar uh, and oftentimes the white on the tips of their paws and possibly the tip of their tail. But they're very, very different animals. They are very, very different. And those two, I would often forget were even the same breed because Wolfie's a little bigger. Their personalities were completely different. And the only time they looked alike was when they're standing in parallel. I'll put up a picture. <laughs> but I assure you that if you came along later and said, Steve, one of them is gone, it's my fault, I'll cut you a check. That's a non sequitur. Cutting me a check literally does zero to compensate me for the loss of one of them. Now, I'm not going to take the step and say they are the same as children because I, I, don't, I don't think that is a fair thing to say to people who have children. But, but to someone like me, they were my children. And that puts them in a class that should be handled separately. So I'm glad to see legislatures addressing this in this manner. I think it's a good thing. It's a step in the right direction. This is happening in Canada, British Columbia, but it's huge. And, and hopefully more and more places will pick this up and take a look at it. So it's good for it to get in the news. And by the way, I did a video. I'm not going to mention which one. A couple weeks ago. And somebody commented and goes, here's this lawyer making videos and doing nothing about it regarding what I was talking about. And the video I made got more attention than the article about the event I was talking about. I did more to advertise that event than the news did. And so the first step, I always tell people this, if there's a problem in the world, the first step is to spot the problem. Oh, there's a problem. Identify the problem. Second step, if you can't fix it yourself, let other people know about it. Because with help, you might be able to fix it. So the second step is publicizing the issue that is actually doing something. So I think we're doing something here by talking about this. Changes to Family Law Act will make it easier for separating couples. I got that from a British Columbia government website, news.gov.bc.ca. A bunch of people sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Everything is within walking distance, if you have the time.